Alright guys, it is you, Empty Bogs Maniac, back from the break. It lasts a little longer than expected, but hey, we're back and we're doing what I was really looking forward to in my return to YouTube, and that's to talk some Bulldogs hockey. I am just ecstatic to be getting into this. This video I've been looking forward to since I just came back. I've had the idea to do the season preview. Couldn't do it then. Finally, it is time to do it. We know the captains. We know everything that we have to I'm ready. Let's get into this. So before we talk my thoughts on this upcoming season, I want to first look at last season and do a little bit of a review of how last season went for the Bulldogs, leaders, stuff like that. So of course, last season was played under the circumstances of coronavirus. Difficult time for all, but not for the Bulldogs. They would go 15-11-2 and route to a Frozen Four appearance where they'd fall to the eventual national championship winning UMass Minutemen in OT. The Bulldogs were led in points by senior Nick Sweeney as he put up 28, but when it came to goals, that was the junior speedster Cole Kepi who netted 15. In net, the Dogs wrote a combination of sophomore Ryan Fanti and freshman Zach Stasekal. Fanti led wins with 11, while Stasekal would take the goals against and save percentage with a 2.051 goals against average and a 0.919 save percentage. Now with all that out of the way, let's get into the 2021-2022 season preview. So as our first piece of business, let's talk the leaders of our dogs as they take the ice this season. Returning as captain is the senior out of Stillwater, Minnesota, number 21, Noah Cates. And alongside him with the A's will be Kobe Roth, Louis Rail, and Tanner Latteroo. Now to go alongside with and as a part of that, stellar captaincy group we got going on let's talk about the returning graduates here at umd we got matt anderson louis rail kobe roth and kobe bender all who should help keep umd in contention even though we have lost nick Sweeney, our leading point getter and cole Kepi, our leading goal scorer both established big members of last season's squad but hey we got these four guys coming back they're going to be huge for the team Returning graduates won't be all the Bulldogs have, as it's just like any year. It's time to welcome the next generation of Bulldogs. This freshman class is headlined by forwards. Number 17, Dominic James. Number 22, Kyler Clevin. And number 33, Kyler Lonnie. And the defensive pairing of number 23, Will Francis. And number 20, Owen Galatin. Now, if I pronounce any of those names wrong, I do apologize. But that will not be it for those guys, as we also add the graduate transfer number 37, Casey Gilling, as he makes his way from Oxford over to Duluth. He was a Miami Red Hawk last year. We've seen a lot of him in the NCHC over the last four years. He is a guy that really impresses me. When I heard the news he was coming here to Duluth, I was ecstatic. I cannot wait to see him in the maroon and gold, along with these other new freshmen coming in this year. Now with all that logistical stuff all the way, running down players, stuff like that, we can look to the season. And instead of doing a full rundown of every series, every win, loss, I just want to look at a few key dates that should be marked on the calendar. The first is the opening weekend, October 8th and 9th against Bemidji in a home and home series starting on the road. When it comes to this series, I feel that we need a sweep to set the tone, but at the very least, we need the split winning on our home ice here in Duluth at Amsoil. We then must follow that up with the icebreaker. Next weekend, at, right after that Bemidji series, you take on Michigan in the first game of the icebreaker. This is another game in my eyes must win. It's an early win that will get you in that title contenders conversation throughout the season. You're being the top tier team in Michigan that got better from last year. That's another reason you need to win, though, to prove that you can, you got past Michigan because of a COVID draw in the regionals. So you need to step up to them and you need to show that you can beat them. These guys are going to have Owen Powers. They're going to have Luke Hughes. Did Matthew Berniers come back? I mean, holy, this team is going to be deadly. Prove you can beat them when they're at their best. I then want to look to the next week. That's the Gophers. I don't think I need to explain this. It's a simple three-word thing. Fuck the Gophers. That simple. Now we jump ahead to November when we travel to Grand Forks to meet Nodak. 
Now, like the Rollins, this is an obvious must-win for rivalry reasons, but also the race for the Penrose. That should definitely include both teams throughout the year, probably throw St. Cloud in there, possibly Denver. But what the important part is, is that a sweep here or a split here, that gives you a chance to get a leg up on them if they're trailing a little bit. Not so much the split, but the sweep. You get the sweep that gets leg up. You get the split. Maybe you're maybe you're close with them. So that helps you stay within it. Maybe then you next week get a good opponent draw for you throughout the year. Maybe the maybe the teams that they're playing looks very hot. The team you're playing very cold of late could be a perfect chance to pull yourself into that Penrose race. And that's why the final series I want to look at is the last regular season series. This is when St. Cloud comes to Duluth. And like North Dakota, this could be a big series for the race for the Penrose. Even possibly a chance to lock it down for the first time ever. I don't know if I see that happening. I don't know if I exactly see that as a huge deal. But but it would be very cool to get the Penrose and get it on home ice for the first time. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And after all that, we'd hopefully be able to look not only to the NCHC tournament, but to a national tournament appearance and a possible run to Boston to reclaim the crown and win our fourth national championship. And that was why the Penrose is not important because what it's all about at the end of the year is looking for that fourth. Now, to close, I do feel very good about this season. I think you can tell that. The fact that I'm even talking about a run to Boston should portray that to you guys. But, but, we need to see if it all comes together on ice. And if the Bulldogs do get that chance to go on a run, it could all fall apart early. Never get back on the tracks. I don't think that will happen, but it's possible. So, let me just end this with one thing to tell you guys. Go dogs. See you in the season.